Over the last few years, JavaScript has seen massive improvements to its syntax and functionality, although to be fair, anything would have been an improvement. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of new features. And one of those features that I really like the most is the spread operator. So spread, AKA the dot, dot, dot operator is super useful, but its syntax is not particularly meaningful at first glance. If you look at something like this and you don't know what spread is, this looks like gibberish. Even to somebody who is pretty familiar with JavaScript, uh, it's kind of bizarre looking. So in this video, we're gonna run through the common use cases for spread, talk about how it works, what it does, the three main scenarios where you can use it, and then also talk about how it relates to immutability and things like React. Here are the notes for this video. I've been trying to make notes for each of my recent YouTube videos. Um, if you enjoy them, please let me know. If you think it's a waste of time, also please let me know because uh, it takes a while. And if they're not really useful, then I would rather not make them. Anyway, you can find the link in the description and let's just jump right in. So as I said, spread, AKA the dot, dot, dot operator has a couple of different uses. According to MDN's very dense definition of spread, the spread syntax allows an iterable such as an array expression or string to be expanded in places where zero or more arguments for function calls or elements for array literals are expected, or an object expression to be expanded in places where zero or more key value pairs for object literals are expected. Okay, hopefully that made it very clear and you can just stop watching the video. Well, basically what this is saying is that there are three places where you can use spread. You can use it in function calls when you're actually executing a function. You can use it in an array literal when you're making a new array or in an object literal when you're making an object. So let's start with the first one inside of function calls. So there's a built-in method called math.min. There's also math.max and it returns the minimum value if we use min of whatever arguments you pass in. So in this case, our minimum value will be negative four and that's what we get. So we can pass in 100 arguments, two arguments, one argument, even zero arguments, we get infinity. So if we had an array of temperatures like this, if I wanted to find the min, I could pass in temperatures, but we get not a number because this is one argument, it's treating the whole thing as a value and it's trying to figure out what is the minimum between this array, this entire array and nothing else. So it gives us not a number. What we can do is use the spread operator. And what spread does in this context is it will spread out the items in this array as individual arguments. It's almost like pouring them out of a salt shaker or something uh, into this function call. So it looks like this, the exact same thing, but we add three dots at the beginning. Math.min dot 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 temperatures is equivalent to this math.min 76 comma 72 and so on all of these individual items in the array are now treated as separate arguments they're passed through now in the past before spread we could do it like this the exact same thing math.min but we wouldn't execute it right away we would call apply and then we pass in the value for this don't worry about it if you've never seen this before and then temperatures and what this will do is take all of the values inside of temperatures and pass them as arguments to math.min and actually execute math.min. But hopefully you can agree, this is much, much cleaner. Here's one more example. With console.log, we can pass in a comma separated list of arguments, just like any old function, and it will print them out with a space in between. So we could do hello there, and then an exclamation point, and we get hello space there space exclamation point. So here's an array of some of my favorite TV shows. If I just console.log that array directly, console.log TV shows, it prints out the entire array. But if I instead amend this to use spread dot 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 TV shows, it takes those four values from the array and passes them each as individual arguments to console.log. Now we're not limited to doing this with arrays. We can also do it with things like strings or sets. So here's another const.log with a single string. And if I want my second string to be bananas, this stuff is bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Right now, it's just gonna be one word, bananas. If I add in the spread, dot, 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 a string is an iterable. And so we end up passing each one of those individually to const.log. Oddly enough, this works with math.min as well. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but if we had a string like 9832, and I spread that string, we're passing in each individual digit here, 
and finding the min of that. Now this is very wonky and I really don't think you should ever do this, but I just wanted to show you we're not limited to using spread in functions with arrays. So we can do that with strings, sets, arrays. So we just checked off the first piece. We can use spread in function calls to spread out an iterable such that each element is passed as a separate argument. The next option has to do with array literals. So this is where I use it most of the time, to be honest. Uh, I don't really do this all that much, pass, using it in function calls. It's not unheard of, uh, but I use this day to day. So when we create a new array using an array literal, meaning we're not going new array like this to make an array, but we're using the curly brackets and, or the, excuse me, the square brackets uh, and creating an array this way, we can use spread inside to take data from an existing array and use it to create new arrays. So here I have two existing arrays, nothing to do with spread at this point. I can make a new array, we'll call this one full family, use the array literal brackets, and inside of it, if I wanna combine these two, if I just did parents, comma kids, I look at full family, we now have a nested array. But if I wanted them to be one array, combining these two, the parents and the kids, what I could do instead, I'll have to change the name full family. Let's do full family two. I add spread before both of them. And this works just the same way we saw it, where we could pass in uh, individual elements from an iterable into a function call as arguments. We can now pour them from the salt shaker into this new array. And if we look at full family two, we now have an array that contains all of those elements from parents and kids combined. And the order does matter. If I did dot, 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 kids, comma, dot, 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 parents, we end up with the kids array being poured into this new array first, and then the parents. And we can do this as many times as we want. So here I have three new variables, parents, kids, and dogs, and I'm gonna put them in here. So I'm gonna start with parents, and we can mix and match. Then I'll add the kids in, and you can see a live preview down here. And then I'm gonna add a string in. Let's go with me. So parents, kids, me, and then we'll add the dogs in. And then lastly, we'll add uh, unnamed pet turtle. And there we go. So if we look at what we end up with, we are building a new array based off of three other arrays. We're putting the string me in between. So we have parents, kids, me, then dogs, and then our own string. And we're not limited to strings. This works with numbers or any other elements in an array. It's really, really useful. So another use case for this is just to copy an array. We'll talk about why in a moment. Uh, so we have an array called Originals. It contains some famous artworks, Mona Lisa, American Gothic, School of Athens. And if I wanted to have a variable called Copies, you probably already know this. If you know much about JavaScript at this point, this is one of the most important pieces uh, that arrays are reference types. So if I set a variable equal to an existing array, they are linked, they're pointing to the same thing, they're referring to the same thing in memory. So now if I update copies, like if I push into copies, one of my favorite paintings, Nighthawks, we now have copies that has four elements, but so does originals. So what we could do instead is make the array called copies an actual copy of this array using spread. So a new reference, they're not pointing to the same thing in memory. And that would look like this, const copies equals, and then we just spread originals into an array. So we don't add anything else on top of it. We could if we wanted to, but if we're just trying to make a copy, we now have a variable, an array called copies, and another one called originals. And if I update copies by pushing in Nighthawks again, it's updated, but originals is not. So we've successfully copied an array. Now, a very important note about spread, I put this in the notes. It says, important note, exclamation point, spread only goes one level deep when copying an array. So it does not perform a deep copy of nested data structures. So that's pretty much it for the second piece, which is using spread in array literals. The next one is nice and easy and short after you've seen how it works with arrays. We can do the same thing, but for object literals. So down here, I have a couple of examples these ones are a little simpler. Basically, we can use spread inside of an object literal to take the properties from an existing object or multiple existing objects and combine them into one object. So you can see here, we have main colors and accent colors. 
and full palette is just the combination. So we're using object brackets, curly braces, instead of array literal syntax. But spread does the same thing. It's pouring them out into this new object. And so we end up with this one object that contains, what, four different colors? Here's one last example. We have a variable called lion and another one called eagle. Both are objects. Has tail is true, legs is four on the lion, and can fly is true on the eagle. If I make a variable called hybrid, use object literal syntax, I put name, a new property, as griffin, and then I spread lion and eagle. This is what I end up with. We have an object that now contains these three properties plus name griffin. So we've copied over this data, we've poured it into a new structure, a new object, and we're good to go. If we revisit this, we can spread arguments, or spread an iterable into separate individual arguments in a function call. We can use spread to quickly copy or add on or create arrays based off of existing arrays. And we can do the same thing for objects. We can take existing objects and move their properties. Well, we're not moving them, but copy their properties over to new objects. Now there's one last topic here that's really important, which has to do with why you should care about this. And I'm gonna use the example of React. If you're not familiar with React, I'm not really showing React code at this point, uh, but the ideas are coming from React. So in a lot of different frameworks and tools these days, things like React, there's this idea of immutability, of not wanting to mutate, not wanting to actually change important data in your application. Now in React, there's something called the state, the state is managing, it's controlling the data in your application. And it doesn't mean it can never change, but what we don't wanna do is take an, let's say we're working with to-dos. What we don't wanna do is take this data structure and add on to it by mutating the original. We don't want to remove something or update something or push onto the end or unshift. Instead, what we do is copy it and then make our update to that copy and then we take that copy that's been updated or altered in some way to actually change our application. So instead of updating the original thing in the React state, we don't touch it, we copy it, we make our changes, and then we tell React, okay, here's the new thing we want in the state. As to why this matters, uh, I have a React course. <laughs> I'm not trying to pitch you on it right now, but it's a difficult thing to explain in just a couple seconds. Um, but basically React needs to keep, it uses things like object IDs and, and references to figure out when the state has changed, if it needs to re-render, if it needs to update what the user sees on the screen. And so if we are mutating that state, but not changing those objects, not changing the references, then sometimes React thinks that nothing has changed, or it might think something has changed when it actually hasn't. So as a quick example, here we have a function called add to do. This is the very naive add to do, where we have an array of to do's, each one is an object. You'd think the easiest way to add a new to do is just to push onto the to do's. And this works, this, there's no problem with this on its own. But if this was written for React or a similar framework where we don't wanna mutate our data structure, we could do something like this instead. So we have the same array called to do's, but this time the add to do function is a little bit different. What it does is it returns an array where we spread all the existing to do's, two in this case, and then at the end of that array, we add in a new object. And in this case, I actually added a little extra. We take the new to do that was passed in, which is presumably an object as you can see down here. And then we also add in completed and set that to false. So now if I call add to do, and I pass in an object with some name, like a user, let's go with user set to Mordecai and task is set to walk dog. If I hit enter, first you'll notice to do's itself has not been updated. I didn't mutate to do's. What we did instead was make a new array where we have the first two to do's and at the end we have a new to do, user Mordecai task walk dog. And on top of that, we also used spread so that we could add in completed set to false. So if we just focus on this part first, what we're doing is taking the object that we passed in, which in my case looks like this. We took this object and we said, copy all of that data, those properties into a new object and we'll also add in completed set to false. So now we have an object with three properties. Then if we go one level out, 
We also said make a new array, copy over all the existing to-dos, and then take this object that we created and put it at the end. And there we go. Now if we instead had this, this works fine, but you should know that this is putting the new to-do at the beginning of your array, which you might want depending on how you want your, your task list to work. If you want the most recent ones up top or down at the bottom, most of them that I've seen, I uh, have them go down at the bottom, so I would put them at the end of the array. But anyway, the point is, there's nothing necessarily wrong with pushing onto an array or a data structure and mutating it in general. But when you're working with a lot of these newer tools and frameworks, and in React specifically, we're talking about the state. We don't want to mutate it. We don't want to push or unshift or change a value in an array or an object. We always want to copy and then update that copy and use that new copy to then set the state. And spread is very, very helpful when we do that. You don't have to use spread, right? I've shown a couple times that we can accomplish most of this stuff without spread. It's just a lot longer, a lot messier, a lot of different method calls. But if we use spread, it's nice and tidy. As long as you can understand what it means, uh, and hopefully it doesn't look like gibberish anymore, it'll become something that you use all the time. Super useful in my opinion, one of my favorite new-ish features in JavaScript. If you have any questions, please leave a comment on this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, uh, do all that annoying stuff.